Sports are still dead, but boy do we have some things to talk about today. All right, man, let's get right into it. My name is DJ Eastwood. This is Run It Back Philly Sports Talk. You know the drill. Subscribe, like, comment, all that nonsense. Check it out, man. First of all, it was reported yesterday or the day before that Ben Simmons' back issue is completely gone, completely healed. He is 100% healthy if the season would return or the playoffs would start, or whatever kind of situation they come up with to finish this NBA season, Ben Simmons would be 100% healthy. We'd be ready to go. We got our guy back, uh, and that's huge, obviously. We don't stand a chance without him. We we absolutely don't. You saw what happened. What do we do? We, we got to rely on Shake Milton scoring 40 points a game to have a chance to beat the best teams in the league. We can't survive without Ben Simmons. Shooting woes aside, all all this stuff like that aside, we know that even though he's frustrating, a lot of times Ben Simmons' ability on the court, his ability to spread the ball around, his defensive ability, his, his impact on the game in general, we can't win without him. We don't stand a chance in the playoffs without Ben Simmons and vice versa. We don't really stand a chance in the playoffs without Joel Embiid. And Brett Brown's job is to balance those things, and we'll get into that. But Ben Simmons is healthy. I'm happy about it. Let me know what you guys think. There's some other things we got to talk about here because because some things happened. There were some interviews on ESPN. Ben Simmons said he's ready to shoot the ball. Joel Embiid made comments about Ben Simmons not shooting the ball. And Brett Brown claims that he considered benching Ben Simmons for not shooting. I'm going to give you my thoughts on all of those things right now. Listen. All right, so Ben Simmons' comments on shooting the three or not shooting the three. We've been over this a million times. Uh, some people believe he's never going to do it, but for some reason, now that he's been sitting at home playing Call of Duty for two months, he decided to give new comments on it. So here it is. Ben Simmons attempted just two subsequent uh, three-pointers in three months of the NBA season. And here's what he said. Some people put so much emphasis on it, it's a little too much. It made me back check and say, let me focus on what I'm good at. There are things I do on the court where nobody can stop me when I'm putting up steals, assists, and scoring in the paint. <sighs> I still can't get over how it's this complicated. I still cannot get over how it's this complicated. Like he's making this such a huge thing in his head. Some people put too much emphasis on it. It made me back check. Let me focus on what I'm bro. It's not that complicated. You just shoot the basketball at the rim. That's all you do. It's not some big giant equation, some big obstacle situation some, some all about what people say and what, what just shoot the basketball that's it you catch it in your hands you look at the rim and you shoot it and then the whole situation's done everything's over none of this stuff happens if you just shoot the ball I know it's going to come, Simmons says. It's a matter of me being comfortable doing it. Some of that is getting the reps in. I can take a hook shot from the elbow because I've done it so many times. I'm confident it will go in. It's a second nature. With threes, it's never been like that. i got to make it a point of emphasis. I could be one of those guys shooting 30% right now, but I'd rather be one of those guys shooting 40%. Oh, my God, where do I even start with this? There's so many things here. Okay, first of all, it's a matter of me being comfortable doing it. Some of that is getting the reps in. I'm confident it, my hook shot, I'm confident will go in at second nature with threes. It's never been like that. But you're not going to shoot 100% and nobody expects you to shoot 100%. So how is this even a question? What does this even mean? You cannot play the game of basketball with the fear of missing a shot. And that's that's fundamentals that's the first thing you learn in damn middle school bro you gotta take the open shot nobody cares if you miss 
Now, if you're 0 for 10 and you're still chucking like Robert Covington sometimes, that's a different story. But if you're Ben Simmons and you have the ball at the top of the key and you're wide open, just shoot it. Nobody cares. How has he made this so big that he's so worried about missing the shot that he absolutely will not shoot it? I don't understand. I could be one of those guys shooting 30% right now, but I'd rather be one of those guys shooting 40. It doesn't work like that, Ben. It does not work like that. You can't, you're not going to get so good at shooting threes in practice that suddenly you're going to come out and shoot the ball during the season at 41% like J.J. Redick. That is not going to happen. That's like me practicing driving a race car on my own personal racetrack with nobody out there and running a fast time and then jumping into a full-blown Indy 500 and expecting to beat everybody. It's a different game. You, you only get better at it by doing it in the moment, in the game, in the event. You can shoot all the threes you want in practice. Shoot 80% in practice. Nobody gives a shit. You're not going to go out there in an NBA game and shoot 40%. You got to just shoot 30%. You got to shoot 25. Nobody cares. LeBron James shot 28% his rookie season, but he shot the ball. How is this his logic? And how are people allowing him to think like this? I could be one of those guys shooting 30% right now. We want you to be that guy. Everybody wants you to be that guy. You're Ben Simmons. You're supposed to shoot 25 or 30%. Nobody cares. Nobody thinks you're going to be a three point specialist. Oh my God, this is giving me an aneurysm. Oh, let's move on. Joel Embiid made some comments in an interview talking about Ben Simmons' refusal to shoot again. And it's just, it's, it's crazy to me that a player can be so stubborn that other superstar players have to be willing to adapt and change their games to accommodate your game and to accommodate the fact that you won't change to help anybody else. You know how selfish that is for other players to be willing to change to help you because you refuse to do anything to help other players. That's crazy to me. Players got to be like, all right, I'll play on the three-point line and I'll do this, this, and this and change my game because Ben Simmons refuses to change his game for me. That's so selfish, it, it blows my freaking mind, man. Here's Joel Embiid. We've had conversations, especially when it comes to shooting. Ben can help me a lot. I feel like I've helped him a lot with his game. People keep saying, oh, you have to stop spending time on the three-point line, but I do it because Ben is such a good driver going to the basket that I got to help open that up for him. I would like him to do the same for me, to start shooting threes, but I also know how uncomfortable he is with it. Oh my goodness. It's almost like for two or three seasons, this was the elephant in the room and nobody wanted to say it out loud. And now it's just becoming public knowledge and people are just openly talking about it. I would like for him to do the same for me to start shooting threes. Like how much more clear do people have to be with you? We need you to shoot the ball. That's what I hate about when people get on Embiid. Oh, he, he's seven feet tall. He needs to be down in the paint. He needs to be down in the paint. He, he needs to stop playing at the three-point line. He thinks, he's a, he thinks he's a guard. He needs to be playing like an old-school set. Bro, we got Ben Simmons in the paint. We got Al freaking Horford in the paint. Half the damn time, we got Tobias Harris in the paint. Josh Richardson's trying to drive and get in the lane. How the hell is Embiid supposed to be in the paint the whole game? They 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 did not build this team around Joel Embiid. They didn't even build it around Ben Simmons. They threw a bunch of players together that make absolutely no sense, and Joel Embiid's game had to change because of it. And Ben Simmons is refusing to change his game. It's crazy, bro. It's crazy that Embiid is saying, I'm changing my game to help you. I'm standing at the three-point line to give you room in the paint, and you are refusing still to do it for me. Just shoot the ball. God, it, it, the, the thing is, if Ben Simmons doesn't do it soon and doesn't start changing his game soon, this isn't going to work because Joel Embiid's eventually going to be like, bro, I don't want to do this anymore. 
I can go play with a point guard that'll shoot threes. I can go play with a, a traditional point guard that'll spread the floor and let me have the whole lane open or a coach or a GM that'll put a bunch of shooters around me and I won't have to deal with this. Eventually, he's not going to want to deal with it. And I think eventually maybe Ben Simmons, if he doesn't do it, is going to run this so far into the ground that he's not able to play with Joel Embiid either, and he needs shooters around him and a big wide open lane because he won't shoot. These two playing together is never going to work if Ben Simmons won't shoot. Go ahead and argue that point in the comments if you want to. It's 100% facts. Last thing I want to talk about, because I got some skepticism on this right here. Apparently... Brett Brown discussed benching Ben Simmons for not shooting threes and then opted against it because, you know, some people say, well, why doesn't he just bench his ass? Just bench his ass. He doesn't want to listen to the coach, just bench his ass. Well, it's 2020. You can't really bench a $150 million star player. The, the, the fans come to watch him play. The ownership is relying on him. The, the whole team's relying on him, and, and the things that he gives the team is so much more than what he would be giving the team on the bench, obviously. So you'd be making your team worse by putting him on the bench. You just, I feel for Brett Brown in the Ben Simmons situation. Your hands are tied. You can't force the guy to shoot. You can say it publicly. You can say it to his face. If he won't do it, he just won't do it. And in 2020, the players run the league, and you don't want to piss the guy off and make him request a trade or something like that. So you just sit back and I don't know. But Brett Brown said this. I told Ben, if you aren't willing to shoot, then do I just bench you? Because I can do that, Brown said. We could have gone that route or continued to coach him as it relates to spacing. We worked on the ability to use it as a choice to shoot the three, catch and go, get in the paint, or find someone else. This was all discussed. I opted to take this path. I think only down the road will we be able to truly assess if it was the right one. In the meantime, he's a two-time All-Star, a kid that's gone from college four to an NBA point guard. His story is a pretty darn good one. Let's dissect this in reverse because that last sentence pisses me right off. He's a kid that's gone from a college four to an NBA point guard. Why did that happen? Whose idea was that? Oh, yeah, it was Brett Brown's idea. Anyway, uh, I just want to tell you straight up, I'm not buying this. I'm not buying this at all because this is, this, this is what I'm thinking right here because this doesn't sound like something Brett Brown would say to a player. Do I just bench you because I can do that? You're not that hard, bro. We know you're not that hard, Brett. Everybody knows you're soft. So in the general Philadelphia sports media, oh, this guy's soft. This guy's too soft. He's too friendly. It'll never work. He needs to be fired. We need somebody that's going to hold players accountable. We need somebody that's going to get in a player's face and tell them how it is. Brett Brown ain't the guy. He ain't the guy. He ain't the guy. And now that this season is, is maybe canceled, he's sitting back sweating like, shit, I might actually get fired this season because everybody thinks I'm soft. So now he's going to come out. And say, I told Ben. So two, a month after the season stops because of a, a coronavirus, you're going to come out and say, I told him to shoot. It wasn't me. It wasn't my fault. I told him to shoot, bro. I told him I was going to bench his ass if he didn't shoot. I did that. I didn't. No, you didn't. I don't believe it at all. I don't believe it at all. We worked on the – I don't believe it at all. I don't believe that he told Ben Simmons he would bench him for not shooting. I do not believe it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments – about that, man. I don't believe it. I'm not buying it. I don't think Brett Brown said that to him. He needed to nip this in the bud from the beginning. From the beginning, he needed to tell him, Ben, like way before he got an extension, a big contract, no, no, he needed to tell him in the beginning, Ben, you got to shoot the ball. This ain't going to work. You can't play point guard if you won't shoot the ball. We'll move you to the four, but you can't really even play the four if you won't shoot the ball in today's NBA either. So, I mean, you're going to be our – our backup center at this point if you won't shoot the ball. Like his rookie season, he should have told him that. Now it's three years in. We're way past fixing it, and Brett Brown's trying to save face by acting like he threatened to bench Ben Simmons. That's my take on it. You guys let me know what you think, man. My name is DJ Eastwood. This is Run It Back Philly Sports Talk, man. Uh, Eagles draft is tomorrow. I might make a video reacting to the Eagles' uh, – 
Eagles draft tomorrow. Let me know how you guys are doing, man. Holding up, staying clean, staying safe, man. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this thing is over soon, bro. Like, <laughs> this is rough. But thanks for watching, man. You guys, I'll see you in the next video, bro. Take it easy. Peace.